Hi everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial where I'm going to be teaching you guys how to go ahead and deploy your Django web applications to something called Versal. All right, so this is something that I've been reading about and it looks like something interesting. So I thought why not go ahead and make a tutorial on it. All right, so let's get started. Now, before we do this, I just want to run through a few things before we actually get to the point here. So what I've done is I've basically just created a simple application. So what I usually do is in a lot of my video tutorials, I just have a basic application that I make use of just to make it easier for you guys. So I just have a single page here. That's all I have. I have nothing else connect to it, connected to it. So I just have a, a single page here. So a template basically. And I can just uh, show you here. So just a simple index.html page with the normal URL and the view. Very simple stuff here, all right. So that's what I have at the moment. So I'm just starting from scratch here for you guys. Okay, so let's get started now. So what we need to do first of all is if you don't have a GitHub account, I would suggest going ahead and creating one. So you can head over to github.com and go ahead and create your GitHub account. Um, what I will do to make it easier for you guys, I will attach the links. So the GitHub link and of course Versal as well. So I will be sure to add that in the description below. So go ahead and head over to GitHub. All right. So once you're in GitHub and you've logged in, so as you can see here, I am currently logged in. You can go ahead and just say new because we need to create a new repository. So I'm going to say new and the repository name here, I'm going to give it the same name as where my project is in. It's in a directory called dev. Okay. So just to give you some clarity here, uh, this is just my folder here. So essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to open my dev folder. Okay, uh, in my project elevate here, and I'm going to move everything here. Okay, into this repository that I'm about to create. And as you can see here, the directory, so elevate is within dev. Okay, so just to uh, give you guys uh, a bit more of an understanding of what I'm doing here. Okay, so we can just go ahead and call this dev. So that will be our repository. I'm just going to leave it as public and add a readme file. That's fine. So be sure you add at least a readme file here. Very important. Okay. We don't want it to cause any issues or whatnot. And you can go ahead and create your repository. Okay. So just make sure you create a repository. It can be anything. You can call it anything that you want. Uh, it really doesn't matter. So just go ahead and create your repository. Okay. So make sure you've done that. Now, the next thing we need to do is head over to Versal.com here. So of course, like I said, I will attach a link in the description below. So what you can do now is you can go ahead and sign up for an, an, an account. Sorry, um, don't worry, it is free. So you don't need to worry about that. So we can go up and sign up for an account. Okay. And a really cool thing of what you can do is you can actually go ahead and continue with the GitHub. Now, this is important. So make sure that you're at least signed in. Okay to GitHub before you do this. So this is why I said, go ahead and create a repository first before you move on. So go ahead and say, continue with GitHub. Okay. So let's just wait for that to open up. Okay. And now it's going to ask you for verification. So what you can do is you can go ahead and enter in your phone number here. So go ahead and choose your, uh, choose your country, wherever you are, and you can just go ahead and enter in your phone number. So it's going to ask you for a verification. Now, don't worry, this is not going to uh, be something uh, that will be a huge problem. So just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do it now, of course, off, uh, off uh, camera. So go ahead and verify this. And once you've entered in your phone number here uh, with your location, you can go ahead and continue. So I'm just going to just pause the video. So go ahead and do that and press continue. And I'll show you what happens after you've done this. All right, so what's usually gonna happen is you'll put in your phone number, um, say continue, and then it's going to ask you for that code, enter in that code, and then I'll show you the next set of steps. All right, so go ahead and do adjust that. All right, so welcome back. So upon completing everything that you needed to complete, you'll notice that you'll be redirected to this page here that says, let's build something new. And you might see a red message appear on the bottom right corner that says something about GitHub uh, could not install or something or import something like that. 
and you should see uh, this, of course, spinner loading here around Git namespace. Now, don't worry about this. We will go into further detail as to what to do here. So all we need to do here is just keep this as is for the moment and then we will move on to the next set of steps. So don't worry about this for now. Okay, we will get to it. Okay, so just make sure you're up to this stage and we're going to leave Versol for just the moment. Okay, so as long as you're here, that's perfect. Now we need to set a few things up. So head over to your application. So you can go to your application and what I'm going to do is head over to my project. So my project in this case is called Elevate. So very important, make sure you know the name of your Django project, of course. So here is Elevate. Now, if you don't know what the name of your project is, okay, it will be the name of the folder where your settings.py file is housed in. So that will make it a bit easier for you to differentiate your project name. So here I have settings.py. Okay, so now that I'm in settings.py, what I want to do here is by allowed hosts, I don't want to allow all hosts, I specifically want to allow hosts that have the extension of .versal.app, okay? So what you can do here is you can say .versal.app, okay? So this will be under the allowed host. So this is the, the domain extension you could say that we want to allow. So make sure you've add in the following, all right? Now, the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to go ahead and configure a versal.json file. Okay, so this is basically our configuration file to bridge the connection and build our Django application and load it onto Versal itself. So this is like the communication bridge, you could say, between Versal and Django for our application. Now, to make it easier for you guys, what I've done is I've gone ahead and already created it created it and set it up for you guys here. Okay, so this is of course gonna be a .json file. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all is head over to my project, so my projects elevate. And of course I have my requirements.txt file here. So if you haven't got a requirements.txt file, I'd recommend going ahead and generating one uh, right here. So what you can do to do that before we move on is head over to your project. So make sure you know project here and you can just say pip freeze greater than require oh, greater than requirements requirements dot txt. Okay, so you can type in this following command here. So pip freeze greater than symbol requirements dot txt. And this is going to generate this requirements dot txt file that you that you can see right here. Um, it will generate this. So make sure you go ahead and set and run that command there. Okay, so once you have your requirements.txt file, okay, in your main project directory here, where you have your manage.py, your db, SQLite database, and your requirements.txt file, what you want to do is you want to create a .json file. Okay, so that's very important. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a versal.json file. Okay, so this is what we need to do. So what you can do is you can go ahead and right click on your project here, say new file, and you can of course say versal.json. Okay, so this is important. So make sure you have this versal.json file created here in your projects directory along with manage.py requirements.txt. It's important that you get the directory correct because if you're not in the right directory, um, you will get an error. Now, the next thing that we can do is add in this code here. Okay, I will explain it, so don't worry. Now, regarding this code here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paste it uh, in the comment section. So I will pin the comment so you can literally go ahead and copy this from the comment of this video. Now I will go through this with you. So the important thing first of all is the source. So SRC, so this is your source code. So remember the name of your project. So my na the name of my pro Django project is Elevate. So here you can change this to the name of your project. So just to show you again, so Elevate, and that's because my project's called Elevate, and here again, by the destination route, it's Elevate. Okay, so that is the project name. Everything else is gonna be exactly the same as is. The only thing you will change is the project source here under builds, and the route destination, which is Elevate. So the route here, okay, this is where um, Versal is going to look for our Django application. We're pointing it to the WSGI here. And of course, in the source, it will be at the base directory, 
we are going to be making use of the Versal Python platform. And of course here we stipulated here as well again that we want to build our application based on our Django Elevate project at WSGI. Then of course with the configuration setting here, okay, we're just setting the max lambda size and we're setting the runtime to Python 3.9. Now unfortunately, um, we haven't got 3.10 yet for Versal, so we're just gonna have to make do with 3.9. But you shouldn't have much of a problem here because um, as you can see in my requirements.txt file, my version of Django is 4.1.5, so you're not gonna have any problem with that. So I wouldn't worry too much about this fact, okay? So make sure you've got that all in place. So make sure in your major projects directory, along with your manage.py file, you have your requirements.txt file, um, and make sure you have your versal.json file also in your uh, main directory here as well. Okay, so make sure you have that. And like I said, I will put this code in the comment section as well. So make sure that you have that in place, okay. Now there's one more thing that we need to do. And what that is, is we need to head over to our wsgi.py file within our project here. So it will be in the same directory as your settings.py file. So head over to wsgi. Now what we need to do here is we need to set app equal to application. So I uncommented it, commented it out, but just for clarity here, I'm gonna type it again. So I'm gonna say app equals application, okay. Now, you're probably wondering what is the reason for this. So this is because we want to go ahead and bridge the connection and connect it to our Versal app. So do bear in mind in our settings.py, we did set the, the allowed host to .versal.app. So we need to set the app here, of course, to application. Okay, so that we can ensure that we are connected, connecting to our Django app on Versal, because remember Versal is called .app. So this is why we need to explicitly state the app part right here, okay? So make sure you have this in place, very important. Okay, so these are the main key areas. So to sum it up for you guys, the important things that you need to do is under allowed hosts, you need to say .versal.app. First thing you need to make sure you have. Next thing you need to do is make sure in your main project's base directory you have a requirements.txt file or generated. If you want some clarity, just make sure you have the following as uh, on my screen. And also make sure you, you've created a versal.json file right here in your directory as well. And the only things you need to configure here is of course the source under builds and the route destination or dest, which is gonna be the name of your project. That's the only things that you need to change here. There's nothing else that you need to do. So make sure that you've gone ahead and made these changes. Right, so let's get started with the deployment process. All right, so before we can make use of Versal here, and import our Git repository, we need to actually go to our repository itself and we need to go ahead and push our code here. So what we can do is we can head over to our projects uh, folder here. So mine is called dev and elevate is my actual Django project itself. Okay, so I'm going into elevate and I'm gonna copy everything over into my GitHub repository. So let's head over to GitHub here and I'm just going to do it the following way. So I'm going to go ahead and copy everything here. So let me actually copy that. So make sure you have everything copied and you can just drag it to your uh, repository here. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Okay, everything is being uploaded. So let's just wait for that to be uploaded. So I have about 50 files, so not too much. So let's just wait for this to upload and we can then move on to the next set of steps. So once all of our files have been uploaded, we're going to of course commit them, and then we can go ahead and import that exact repository in Versal, and we can literally just watch it build and run. So it has a very similar way of running uh, like a railway, but yeah, let's go ahead and check this out. So everything's been uploaded. So we can just commit the changes. So here I'm just gonna say code commit. <laughs> it's actually an AWS service actually. So code commit, and I'm just gonna commit the changes. And commit it. Now there's many ways in which you can commit your code to GitHub. I'm just showing you a very simple way um, as to how to upload them. So of course, it's really up to you as to how you wanna go ahead and 
do that. So let's just wait for it to process. So I have a very small application, as you can see. So it will be very fast to actually go ahead and upload. OK, so everything is set and ready to go here. Now, the next thing that we want to do is head over to Versal. And here it says import Git repository. You just want to scroll down here. And here in that bar where you see the spinner, you'll see a drop down symbol here. And you can just say add GitHub account. So you're going to add your GitHub account. And you're basically going to install Versal and give it permissions to access your GitHub account. So that's all that you're going to be doing here. So what you can do effectively is you can go ahead and either choose all repositories or select a repository. So my repository uh, from here, of course, was dev. OK, so that's my repository. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to say only select repositories. And here comes a drop down where we can select a repository. So I'm going to select a repository and I'm going to choose dev here. So cloud of Django forward slash dev. Great. And you can just read the requirements and just go ahead and install it. OK, there we go. So it's now connected to Cloud with Django. All right. And our project has been set up accordingly. Now, what we can do next is we can go ahead and just say import. OK, so as you can see, we're almost done here. So we can now go ahead and configure our project. You can give the project a name here. So I'm just going to call this um, a Django deployment one. OK, and we can leave everything as follows. It doesn't matter. So we've configured everything accordingly in our versal.json file. So once you put in a project name, you can simply hit deploy. And that's all you need to do. Uh, OK, the name. <laughs> So Django, I'm just going to say Django, uh, Django one. Uh, should be fine. Uh, name is where you're going to be. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to say Django. Let's go there. Okay. Apologies for that. So here we go. So it's now going to be building our project. So let's just wait for this to build. Okay. So our application was deployed. And if we click on this space here, we can see it sends us to our application. And we can see we have deployed our application successfully on a vessel. All right. So that's it, guys. That's how you can go ahead and deploy a Django application or web app to Versal. OK, so you can see it's very simple, very easy. Um, I, I can see it's very similar to Railway, which is a plus. So that's something that you can, of course, bear in mind. So something very interesting to note. So there we have it all deployed and set and ready to go. All right. So that's it, guys. And as always, thank you for the support. And until next time, see you.